What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful, delicious, smoky, juicy, smoked rabbit. Coming up! Easter is right around the corner, folks, and that means you're going to be seeing a lot of hams, lamb, pork loins, all sorts of things hitting the dining room table. But for me, when I think about Easter, I think about bunnies. And it just so happens that I have a rabbit in my freezer. So, that being said, today I'm going to show you how to smoke a rabbit, and it is going to be delicious. Let's head to last night. This is a rabbit. I picked this up at Countryside Farms the other day when Evan and I were out there shooting a Leroy and Lewis Patreon video, getting a farm tour, talking to Sebastian. You should definitely check out that video. It's a super cool place. He's raising some really cool animals like foie gras ducks, geese, guinea hen, rabbits. And if this rabbit is half as good as his ducks, then we're in for a treat. This is a good looking rabbit. Ooh, we got the liver in there too. Cut that out, make a little snacky poo a little later on. Nice and clean, got these beautiful tenderloins in there. And if you've never had rabbit before, it's just like the movies say, tastes just like chicken. So that's how we're gonna treat it. Starting with a brine. Ooh, this is a neck, but it looks a little too much like a butthole. We're gonna flip that around. Oh, is that better? <laughs> Some water. I'm just gonna eyeball as much water as I think I'm gonna need to completely submerge this thing without overflowing the vessel. Once we have the weight of water, we're gonna add 5% of salt. Oh, ye, don't overdo it. Oh, you getting close. Perfect. And we're just gonna whisk that up until it all dissolves. Beautiful. We're gonna go in with the exact same amount of weight of some hot sauce. I'm going with some Frank's Red Hot. This is just gonna add some acidity, some extra flavor. You could go in with some lemon juice or something like that, but I find a nice acidic hot sauce works quite well. And basically what we're doing is just trying to mimic the properties of buttermilk. And this is my go-to chicken brine for any time I'm doing any kind of poultry, really. Next up, going in with some crushed garlic, some mustard seeds for good measure, a good shot of white pepper, some Italian herbs. You can go fresh, but I mean, we're going into a brine, so they'll hydrate nicely, add some nice flavor. And because I always have way too many on hand, we'll throw in a couple of bay leaves as well. Whisk that up, get it nicely mixed. And now in with our rabbit. Boop. Enjoy your little bath. Perfect fit. Into my refrigerator this goes until tomorrow morning. One day later and this rabbit is fully brined. Ooh, smells good. I'm gonna give this thing a quick rinse just to get all these extra herbs and any extra salt or brine off of there. Now we got this rabbit out of the brine. It's time to split it open just like a whole hog. These hind legs are pretty well spread already, so I'm gonna just take these handy dandy kitchen shears and go right through the old breastplate up here and see what we can do. Scissors are not the right tool for the job. Beautiful. Now that we've got this thing fully opened up, I'm gonna go through and just kind of clean out some of this stuff a little bit. Any of this membranes. Similar to the membrane you'll find on the back of a chicken thigh. But we've got these beautiful hindquarters here. These are very similar to chicken thighs. Then we've got these two little tenderloins, these little back straps in there. Very meaty, very delicious. And then we've got these front legs, a lot of good meat. I think it's time to season this thing up. In my rub, I'm starting with two parts black pepper, one part garlic powder, and one part paprika. Just gonna get that all nice and mixed up. Simply enough, gonna get it nicely coated, even coating all over. It's already seasoned all the way through because of the brine. This pepper and garlic and paprika is just gonna add some nice color as well as a little extra flavor, give us a nice bark on the outside. Beautiful. Mm-hmm, smells good already. Super simple rub, not much to it. Just trying to get a little extra flavor on the old Easter Bunny here. And you can go with whatever rub you want on this. You could just put pepper on there. Again, it's a lot like chicken or turkey or something. Once it's brined, it's already got enough flavor, but adding some extra on top can't hurt anybody. So that is looking good to me. I think it's time to fire up the pit. We're gonna start out with this rat, God, these June bugs. We're gonna start out with this rabbit bone side down over the coals. We will come back and check on it in a little bit. 
One hour later, we've been rocking a solid 300 degrees on this here mini chud box. Let's see how this little bunny is looking. Ooh, smelling real nice. Got some juices coming up. Let's give it a flip. Beautiful color on there. Looking good, smelling good. We got that fat dripping down on the coals, giving it some wonderful flavor. Oh, it smells so good. We're gonna let this rock for a little bit longer while we make a mop sauce. Starting out with two sticks of butter. And we're just gonna let that melt down. I'm actually doing it over here, by the way. Once fully melted and all the water has expelled, we're going in with some fresh garlic. Let that cook away, get nice and fragrant. We're also gonna go in with some Worcestershire sauce. Glug, 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 glug. Good old pinch of mustard pieta. A little bit of hot sauce, why not? And a little bit of beer. You know the drill from here, folks. Oh yes, please. All of this butter and spices and goodness is gonna kind of collect in the old rib cage here, making sure everything stays nice and juicy and moist and tender while adding extra flavor and anything that drips off. Yet again, we'll add more flavor in the form of some delicious smoke. I mean, what more do you need in life than that? Happy Easter. Check back in in a bit. Another 15 minutes later, after a few more mops, we're gonna flip this bad Larry right back over so we can get some mop sauce on the top side. God, it smells good. Beautiful color on there. And this is just gonna help soften up the bark, add some wonderful flavor, make sure nothing's drying out. At this point, we're approaching around 170 internal temps. So we're about to pull this off. Just one more last layer of flavor. Beautiful. Two hours of total cooking time later, this rabbit is done and it's time to pull it off. It's reading right around 160, 165, which is right where you want it to be. But bam, we're gonna let this rest for just a little bit, come down and temp before we slice in. Hard to beat the direct heat, folks. Smells so good. One decrease in temperature later, and I think it's time to dive into this thing. Put a slice down there. Just like a chicken thigh, folks. Find the joint, snap it off. Leg number two, looking real nice. And believe it or not, I'm not that well versed in the butchery of rabbits. We're just gonna go for it. We're gonna follow the rib cage, kind of like a turkey. Oh, that meat feels real nice. I find a natural separation on this hind leg, so I'm gonna just follow that. Front leg. Natural seam right here. We'll just go right in there. Take this leg off. Oh my goodness, that looks so juicy. I'd eat that. And like I said, I'm gonna keep following along the rib cage here. See how much meat we can get off of this. Ooh, a little snack for Papa. Mmm, mm-hmm. That is good. And we got this beautiful loin. Looks just like a chicken tender, that white meat. Oh, so tender. I mean, look at that meat. Would you just look at it? Juicy. Smells so good from the direct heat. Mm-hmm. It tastes just like a chicken thigh. So good. For this other loin, we're gonna take it from the back. <laughs> that is some beautiful white meat right there. Uh, yes, please. I don't know about you folks, but I think it's time to dive in. Ooh, yup. Mm-hmm. Mmm, it's so good. It honestly tastes just like chicken. This is some delicious protein right here. Um, this is what they should be serving at fairs. Forget turkey legs, rabbit legs. That's a substantial piece of meat. Yeah, this is a keeper. I mean, what's not to like about that? All this loin meat, this backstrap rabbit meat is perfect for chunking up and making a beautiful sandwich out of. Leroy and Lewis Beat Barbecue Sauce. On sale now at LeroyandLewisBarbecue.com. Oh, yes, please. Oh, God. Boop. Does it get any better than that, folks? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seriously, why don't more people smoke rabbit? It's so good. <clears throat> All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make a delicious smoked rabbit. If you've never cooked it before, I highly recommend giving it a shot. It's an incredibly easy, super tasty way to add a new protein to your repertoire. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know by hitting that subscribe button, like the video, hit the bell, all those things. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Head over to chudsbarbecue.com for all things pit related. And until the next time I see you, please go. 
cook something outside. Peace.